Good evening. I appreciate those of you that are watching online today. Uh, we're gonna. We haven't had a Bible study in a couple of weeks, and I apologize. Uh, well, I guess we had one two weeks ago. And last week I was in Texas at a uh, minister's conference uh, at uh, in Fort Worth, Texas, for Kenneth Copeland Ministries. It was a blast. I gotta tell you, it was really good. I learned a lot. Um, we had a tremendous anointing there. It was a, a lot of uh, a lot of preaching, but that's good. It was only three days of eight hours each, so that's not too bad. <laughs> anyway, it was really enjoyable, and uh, I just want to tell you, I, I, I wanted to put uh, some of the teaching online, but it was just not possible at the time, so apologize for that. Maybe we'll get some on there sometime, but anyway... I, I thank you for enduring us not being here last week. You can endure us now being here. <laughs> so, a couple of uh, where we're going to we're going to be starting today uh, in Ephesians six. So, you, if you got your Bibles, you can turn to Ephesians six. We're going to be talking about the full armor of God, and I know you've heard this a thousand times, but not this way. I promise. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, so we're going to be talking about that a little bit. But first. I know everybody's kind of wondering, they got questions about things, and uh, and by the way, if you ever have a question, during our Bible study, you can uh, uh, text, text, the, yeah, text, text uh, my wife at uh, uh, 256-777-9606, or you can just put a comment, because she's going to have it on live here, just put a comment on whatever you're watching, and it should come live to our uh, to her phone, it's gonna be on this phone too, but I won't hear it. But live on this phone so that uh, we can answer any questions you have. At least we'll give it a good shot. Most of the time we can. So, all right. So tonight, uh, first I want to talk about uh, President Biden, and I mean, I'm calling him President now. It's the first time you've heard me say that, right, President <laughs> Biden? Anyway, uh, people are wondering what's going on in our world. Well, you know. He's, he's fulfilling promises he made for all those who voted for him. I mean, people are thinking, oh, no, this is horrible. There's been 33 executive orders undoing everything uh, President Trump did and then adding some extra things. And, mm -hmm. and uh, now even the people that voted for him are saying, what's going on? He told you he was going to do these things. Mm -hmm. right? So you're going to have to endure it for a while, I believe. But, uh, yeah, so people are saying, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wasn't Trump, President Trump supposed to have two terms as president? Uh, according to what we heard many, many times from different prophets, and I believe these prophets, he is supposed to have two terms. But, but it's, let, me, let me go into this a little bit about prophecy. It doesn't mean if something didn't happen that the prophet was wrong, because there are a whole lot of things in the Bible that prophets prophesied that didn't happen, mm -hmm. and it's because the people wouldn't allow it to happen, or the the uh, king wouldn't allow it to happen or whatever the case may be. But there were always consequences of things not happening when the prophets said they were going to. And as there will be now too as well. Uh, so I, I stand strong in the fact that uh, I, I believe 100% that he was supposed to have two terms and I know there's going to be a lot of changes to our government and so on if things don't change. But I stand strong on the fact that I know God is still on the throne and he hasn't, he hasn't gone on vacation. He does know what's going on. You know, it's funny because the Bible talks about that. Well, God didn't go on vacation. You know, <laughs> he's still around. And it's true. He's not on vacation. He's not taking a nap. He knows what's going on. And he hears the voices of his people. And millions and millions and millions have been praying for a while. So uh, just stand strong. We're going to be talking about that a little bit more tonight. Um, so you, you can believe, you know, what the prophets say. Uh, now, I know there are false prophets. We've, we've uh, encountered a few over the years. And one, one time when we were down in Gladwin, and I was, uh, I was the head of uh, the uh, Faith Christian Fellowship at that time in, uh, in Michigan. So I had a lot of churches that looked to me. And anyway, the um, Lord woke me up one morning and said, uh, well, he, he kind of, yeah, I guess he woke me up and spoke to me instantly. He said, there's going to be someone call you in just a moment. And he's going to say he's a prophet from Georgia. And the great revival is going to begin in your church, but he's going to be leading it. And so you need to get him up here. And, but he's not a prophet, the Lord said. 
So don't allow him to come up because he will destroy your church if he does. Well, Cindy woke up and said, what happened? I just told her. And you then did the, tell me. I told her, and then the phone <laughs> rang. <laughs> Literally just in I those mean, steps. Just that quick. And uh, <laughs> so I answered the phone. He said, hi, you don't know me, but I'm a prophet from Georgia. And I said, I know all about you. You do? And I said, yeah. Well, that's great. How do you know? I said, God told me. Oh, that's fantastic. I said, not for you. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? And I said, uh, God woke me up to tell me that there was going to be a, a guy that claimed to be a prophet from Georgia calling. And, uh, and the great revival was going to start here, and he was going to bring it in, and so on. I said, and he told me not to trust you. You're not a prophet. And if you come up, you'll destroy our church. He said, wow, that's just the devil talking to you. Why are you listening to the devil? And I said, huh? I know God's voice. I wasn't listening to the devil. It was God's voice. And he got pretty upset with me and tried to convince me I was listening to the devil. And then he went, and anyway, he hung up and he called one of our other FCF churches, our Faith Christian Fellowship. That was under Buddy Harrison. And it wasn't long before that person called me, that pastor called me and said, Brother Dave, you, you've, got to, you, you've got to let this guy come up. I mean, otherwise the great revival won't begin. I said, do you think God can't begin a great revival if I miss it? And don't invite somebody up here. <laughs> I said, God is sovereign. Believe me, it can happen either way. But you, I'm telling you, God spoke to me and said, this guy is not a prophet. Do not have him up. He'll destroy your church. And she said, well, then I'll just have him at my church. And I said, then it'll destroy your church. Please don't do that. Well, she did invite, she invite, did. invite him up, and she did destroy mm -hmm. their church. And, you know, there Before are... When was done, the church was destroyed. There are false prophets. Wow. We may as well say that. There are false prophets out there that just want their name out there or just want to, you know, be some part of something big or whatever, but they're not really serving God. And uh, so, but I, you know, the prophets that we've been listening to were on Victory Network, which I trust 100%. Uh, and they did say, you know, that he would be serving two terms. Now, there's a couple of possibilities. Uh, he's already said that he's probably going to write run again in 2022. That's still two terms if he wins, right? So the other thing is this whole thing could fall apart. Uh, you know, there are still a lot of court cases going on. So, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. The thing is, in the meantime, we need to be doing everything we can as Christians and what we're supposed to be doing as Christians. Winning people to the Lord, standing our ground, and, and, and not giving up. All right? That's important. Amen. People have asked me, well, did God hear our prayers? Well, of course he heard our prayers. He definitely heard our prayers. You know, I asked that same question when I was in Washington, D.C., and I'd gone there to, I spent a lot of time driving. We spent a lot of time driving there. I went with my brother and his son. Uh, driving and getting there just in time to really not get any sleep, but get out and, and get into the crowd that was growing very quickly. There were about two million people. Now, whenever the news says, don't believe it, I was there. <laughs> anyway, because uh, Cindy and I had been uh, at a rally back in the Reagan years. <laughs> I know that's a long time ago. I know we're too young to be able to have done that, but it, <laughs> but we were, and uh, we went to it was to a, a right to life rally. I had, was president down in Gladwin County at that time of right to life, and uh, we we went out for the big rally that was on the mall area. Yep. And what was there about a thousand people there at that time? No, a million. A million. Yeah, there was a million a people. Million. Yeah. And. You said that there, there was, was at least double that. Double yes. everything. You know what? I forgot to turn this thing on. I'm not quite sure. Yep. So you talk for a minute about that while I go turn okay. this on. <laughs> <sighs> yes, it was, it was pretty exciting to be there to feel um, people of... When you're in a crowd like that of people that share your beliefs... Now, when I say that, I do not mean we all share the same Bible necessarily beliefs, but we all share the same beliefs on how we stood on abortion and it's just incredible and that's what Dave experienced when he was out in Washington um, in support of President Trump so that's a fact <laughs> so there were about two million people there and uh, you know they, they started arriving at six o'clock in the morning maybe before that we didn't get there until 6 30 like earlier than that maybe we were there about 6 30 and it, it was so crowded that I thought, you know, I'm just going to, I'm not going to stick around here. I want to go over to the Capitol building so I can pray because that's what the Lord sent me there to do. So he sent me there to bind lies and loose the truth. So I did that for a few, couple hours at least. What's that? 
I just yawned, so I was okay. like, um, say it, excuse me. So after doing all that, then of course I get sprayed by tear gas and, and uh, you know, everything kind of falls apart. People got mad about that and they jumped over the wall and the rest is kind of history. But not, it wasn't the Trump mob, just so you know. There were a lot of people that wasn't were even the, the white supremacist, huh? It wasn't even <laughs> the white supremacist. That's the new term we're yeah, hearing whatever. nowadays. Anyway, it was it was people that they brought up in vans. As the uh, the what do you call that? The Capitol Police escorted them up in vans, and they they were standing up with microphones and everything else. But that wasn't part of the two million people. I got there first, so I'm watching all these people come up. They didn't. Very few of them went over that wall. They were being enticed by these other people with the microphones, but. It, it doesn't matter. Um, it didn't happen like they said. And so uh, I, when I got knocked down, you know, and got back up and tried to get my way out of there, I asked the Lord. I, I was very, I was in anguish, let me put it that way. The Lord had told me, told me before I had eight days of anguish, I guess he was talking to me. Anyway, um, but I was saying, Lord, did I just do all this in vain? Did you not hear did my prayer not go up into the heavenly heavenlies? Did the binding and loosing not work? <clears throat> and God spoke very clearly to me and he said, it worked. But the spiritual realm, which would bind on earth will be bound in heaven. He says the spiritual realm takes, you know, is a different time. It's not, it's not like we have on earth. In the spiritual realm, things happen. Things that seem like a long time are in an instant in the spiritual realm, but it's a long time to us. The Bible says a thousand years to the Lord is like a day. A thousand years to us is like a day to the Lord. So anyway, so timing is different. And he said, it's still working. And you will see it come to pass. I didn't send you here in vain. Well, it's the same with all of our prayers. You know, when we pray, God hears us. Remember in the, in the book of Daniel, Daniel was praying about insight. God had given him this vision, which we read, of course, now. You can read in Daniel, but you're also going to read in Revelation. That was a vision that God gave Daniel, okay? And, and he sealed it up in a book, you know, and he sealed... You know, when they were writing a book back then, this is the way they did it. They had a scroll. They had paper rolled up, like bark or something. Right. And so, you know, it was all rolled up tight. And so when someone needed... You know, it wasn't like going and getting a bundle of paper. They went and got a scroll, empty scroll, and they started writing on it. But every so often, because it was running, coming, kind of coming back out on your hands, they had to seal it with wax so it would just stay put and you can write more. That's what the seals were all about. It wasn't some mystical thing, okay? Uh, so uh, it was written by Daniel and then uh, Jesus was found worthy to open it and the end times, that was the last days, okay? I mean, he, the last days lasted a long time, but it's been a couple days for God, okay? So anyway, uh, so that's, that's how that all began. So and where was I about that? What was I talking Oh. Daniel, Daniel didn't understand what he was writing down, so he asked God, and he prayed for 21 days about it, and he just was persistent. How persistent are we? Anyway, he prayed for 21 days, and then uh, the archangel uh, Michael came, and he said, you know, and oh, he says, Don't, do not fear, because these angels show up, you know, and kind of scare you. Anyway, and then he said, uh, God heard your prayer the moment you began to speak it but these 21 days there's been warfare going on in the heavenlies and i've been fighting against the prince of persia you know and uh, so anyway you know it was because of all that he said it took 21 days to get to him okay 21 earthly days it wasn't a long time for them in the spiritual realm but it was a long time for us so anyhow um so that's what began, that's what happened but god heard him and god sent an angel to give him the interpretation. But it took 21 days. So we can't be so impatient to say God didn't hear our prayers and God's not going to answer it and everything's going to go, you know, the world's going to be destroyed and so on. We've got to trust what God has set up and trust what we see. Amen? So having said all that, now it's time to get into our study in Ephesians chapter 6. Let's turn there. I just had it, but then I closed it. Galatians, Ephesians, oh, okay. Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to start with uh, verse 10. Now this, uh, this study is uh, from uh, Rick Renner. He was at the, uh, the conference. Oh, the book. Yeah, Rick, Rick Renner wrote this book, 
Sparkling gems. And there's actually a second edition out now. Yeah. So. And, and this is work. this is actually it goes by the day, so it's actually kind of like a uh, devotional. Devotional, mm -hmm. and it's the most awesome devotional you ever read because he he understands the Greek language and the Hebrew language and everything extremely well, mm -hmm. and because of that, yeah, it's a little heavy, isn't it? And so because of that, um, yeah, you want to show a picture of him? Well, a little little I short just... guy with a bald head, <laughs> kind of like me. I don't like think it <laughs> But you can find him easily just by typing in his name, Rick he, Ritter. He is a missionary over in Russia. Mm -hmm. He's been for many, many years. He's got great favor with the Russian government. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's, that's really good. They have a big, big church, and they allow them to preach freely. And it's awesome. Uh, that may, they may be more, have more freedom than we do soon. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, but uh, great guy. Very, very intelligent and so this this study tonight is probably pretty much taken from the notes that I took which weren't really detailed but anyway I remembered some of it and uh, so we're gonna, be, we're gonna be talking about this today because I think it's a very very important so we're starting with verse 10 in chapter 6 and first of all it says finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and the power of his might so that first word finally is very important it is. finally means the most important matter at hand. This is the most important matter at hand. That's what it means in the Greek. The most important matter at hand. He'd been talking about a lot of things, but then he said, finally. And realize, you know, Paul was writing this, and he's talk, he was writing it to the Ephesian church, to Christians. Now, let me stop right there for a moment, because a lot of people say, well, everybody, you know, everybody knows to put out the whole armor of God. Most people do not do it, Okay. So when he said, when I say uh, he's written to, he says, finally, my brethren. The brethren were the ones that were more like, you know, we talked about people that say they're Christians versus those who really believe that he's Lord as well as Savior and believe the word of God. They're called believers. Okay, they're called believers. Now that's important. Amen. And so uh, he was talking to the believers, the ones that were going to make a difference in the world. So he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So when he says be strong in the power of his might, it's like, he says, uh, it means that we're a force of nature, a force of nature, kind of like a hurricane, okay, like a hurricane. Uh, you know, hurricanes come in, even a, even a category two is strong, and it, and it really makes, you know, a horrible, horrible damage. Uh, there was a tornado. They don't even know what size it was yet. They went through Alabama yesterday. And, uh -huh. yeah, and, and you didn't either. You well, know it wasn't John, anywhere near. Our it. son lives there. Nobody told me this. <laughs> and it was nowhere work, near where he lives. But anyway, well, it's no, over by I'd the like Georgia border. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, and it destroyed many, many houses and killed some people. I mean, that's a force of nature, right? We had a Category 5 tornado hit us when we lived down there. And it was very interesting. I've never experienced anything like that. And literally banks, anything that ran on electricity was closed. Everything anything. was closed. Electronics, all of them were down. If you didn't have the cash, you were going to wait. Or you were going to drive out of our area, which right. was a good hour out of the way. And they didn't have the gas stations running either. No. Gas stations, the stores were able to walk people through. Uh, you went in one at a time and you were escorted around and they sold the freezer stuff um i for a good 24 hours i'm not sure i don't remember clearly yeah, as on long that. as they could and yeah. fresh produce and then it was all thrown out we had i had just gotten a really nice deer we had it in the freezer a big one hey, now that was another fun thing <laughs> our our um, neighborhood though they were watched out for each other everyone was going around either offering you coffee food inviting you down to to cook, but we all cooked our foods and and kind of, I, I want to say, just did a, a it was fun. But anyway, and that part was fun. So I, I actually went down and helped out the fire department mm -hmm. as far as cooking for them and stuff we like did that. We both yeah, did, we both right, did. Uh, yeah. with uh, Red Cross. Red Cross. Mm -hmm. We were part of Red Cross. So anyway, uh, that was fun. But I was talking about the force of it. The force of it <laughs> took out. Oh my out. goodness, I was talking about the uh, yeah, yeah. interesting part of it. I want to talk about the force of it. I worked for a newspaper at the time, so <clears throat> my editor and I headed out 
uh, the next morning when we could see. Because we the night before, we knew it was bad. We didn't know what was really going on. Then we found out it was a, you know, there were like 13 tornadoes that happened all at once, but one of them was a Category 5. And it took out 380 or so houses. I mean, took them out. I'm talking, they were either a pile of rubble or it was just gone. Right. Tor I mean, some of them, there was a slab and there was no house there. Uh, it killed, I think, 11 or 17 people. I don't remember. Uh, but the, the destruction of that, the force of nature that that was, no one could stand against. You couldn't have stood out in it and survived. And most people, a lot of people that were in their houses got hit by it and didn't survive. So, I mean, that's the force of nature. That's what it means for us to stand or to uh, be strong in the power of his might. It means you are a force of nature. It means, that's what it means to stand in the power of his might, like a force of nature. But this actually says that we are a force of nature. Amen? And in the power of his might, might is not the word dunamis, as many people might think it is, but it's rather kratos, uh, which means to manifest tangible, to manifest tangible power. In other words, when someone looks at you, they ought to see the power of God emanating out of you. Okay? Now, that's extremely important. Now, again, we're talking about spiritual warfare here, not, uh, not physical warfare. So, what would you be fighting against? The Bible says against principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness in high places. So, what is that? You know, that is that's the devil, of course, at the top of it, you know, but also... All the fallen angels have fell with him, you know. So you've got that going on against you, but you're a force of nature. And truly, if you truly got that force of nature in you, if you really understand that and believe this, and you've got that force of nature in you, and I'd like to say everybody has it, but everybody doesn't have it. Because if, you don't, if you're not really a, a believer and don't really believe that you've got it, you won't have it, all right? It's uh, still available to you, but you have to want it and go after it. To, to use it. I remember one time, just an example, uh, you know, I'd go to Charlevoix a lot and, and win people to the Lord, and there was a lot of, back in, in the day, there were a lot of drug dealers, uh, you know, there. And and so, you know, there was a, a lot of people that were high, drugged out, and so on, probably serving the devil. Anyways, I'd go out and I'd, I'd win them to the Lord. And uh, I remember one time, you know, many times actually, when I was walking down, you know, there'd be someone sitting up on the band shell or something. And if you don't know shell, they have a big band shell. Yeah, and they, or sometimes it's out on a dock. We got a lot of docks now, but they weren't the same back then. And uh, so uh, they, would, they would see me happy and, and joyful, and they say, So what do you got, man? We want some of it. What do you got? We want some of it. They figured I found a new drug or something. So I'd go up and tell them about Jesus, and they, they'd tell me they were going to knock me down or whatever. And they never could. God didn't allow it. Matter of fact, they got fearful, and they would get one to the Lord. Well, there was somebody in, in our youth group, a uh, younger kid, that said, I, you know, I want to do that. Can I go out with you? So he went out, and he decided to do what I did. It wasn't smart. <laughs> they threw him in the lake. <laughs> and it was kind of funny, but it wasn't funny to him. But the thing is, you know, even the Bible talks about um, this guy, um, this priest that had uh, seven sons, I believe, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of like my family. And anyway, uh, seven sons, and they decided that they wanted to, they could cast out demons uh, through the power of Jesus. And, and they were, they were, you know, preacher's kids, so they ought to be able to do it. Well, it turns out that the only one, one demon, one demon was able to chase them, rip their clothes off and chase them down the road. And it kind of sounds kind of funny, but it wasn't funny to them, but it's funny to me. Anyway, uh, they didn't know their power. They didn't know their authority. So not everybody has that force of nature authority in them. And so that's important to understand. Don't just go try to take on things that you don't know about. All right? I'm saying that. But you can have it. He's talking to the brethren, the believers. You can have that force of nature inside of you. And that's where our faith comes in. You know, we've got to have enough faith to know. But there's things like understanding our covenant relationship with God. There, it's more than yeah. just, I want this power in me. There's, there's the whole relationship behind yeah. it. Um, like I said, uh, King David, when he went and took on the giant, he understood that he had a covenant relationship with God. 
and that the, that uh, that giant did not. And so he, it's like, there's no contest. I've already won because of my relationship with God. Now, getting back to that current category five hurricane. Okay. Um, I my, didn't change the subject. Though. My editor and I uh, went out the night before. Mm -hmm. There was a storm going on. The clouds were looking. I guess the best word is ominous, <laughs> ominous. but they were really dangerous. We didn't realize what we were looking at. Now, we were looking at a Category 5 hurricane, but we didn't know that. And so we drove out to the local Home Depot, and we sat in the middle of their parking lot because nobody was there. And so we were sitting there taking pictures. And suddenly we noticed a wind going around. I mean, it was rain. Like a whirlwind. Like, rain, like a whirlwind with rain mm -hmm. in it, going around and around the truck. You know, it just kept going around and around the truck. And suddenly we realized we were in the middle of a tornado. And so we took off as fast as we could. And we got to, the, to a part of the road where the police said, follow me, it's every man for themselves, follow me, I'll get you out of here. So we followed him. But you know what we did is we ran, right? Because there was a force of nature. We got him to tell him about the shed. Oh yeah, before we did that, while this was going around, all of a sudden all the sheds that were out, you know, because they have them outside. Home Depot the has now. the sheds in it with spring. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was spring. So anyway, these sheds went up in the air and all disintegrated. And we're, we're just, you know, I don't know, maybe 100 feet from all that going on. And uh, then this thing's going around around us. So we didn't know we were in the middle of a Category 5 tornado uh, until the next day. But we did know that we had to get out of there. And so that when that force of nature came up to our face, we ran. Like we drove, like, as fast as we could, right? As fast as we could. And I had my truck back then. And it went good. It ran good back then. So we just took off. Um, so we look at yourself now as that force of nature. And some, someone wants to come against you that's influenced by the devil or is demon-possessed. Um, and you're a force of nature. When they see you and understand that you're a force of nature with God inside of you, they will run. Because that's what you do when you see a force of nature coming at you. Who's going to stand there in the way of that force of nature and say, I dare you? No one's going to do that. <clears throat> Not even the devil himself. So <clears throat> we understand that when we're talking about the whole armor of God, this is the beginning of it. That we've got to understand who we are in Christ. Mm -hmm. That is Amen. so important to faith. If you don't know that, a lot of these things we're reading and teaching won't work for you. It'll only work for you if you know who you are. And you know what power ha you have within you. Mm -hmm. Amen? So that's really important. So you become a force of nature, but only through Jesus. You know, I have so many people say, well, some people are just born with this stuff. It's not, it has nothing to do with God. No. That is absolutely <laughs> not true. This is 100% God. 100% God empowering you with that force. Right? Uh, I do believe there are people that are born more with confidence. But the relationship with God, that's something we go after. It's, it's offered to us, and it's something we go after. Every one of us. Then, the, then it goes on. It says, uh, put on the whole armor of God. And now this is spiritual armor. Okay, spiritual. It's not physical armor. Although it was based upon the Roman, the Romans' armor that they put on. Okay, but put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand or stand against the wiles of the devil. Now the King James says withstand. withstand. My, mine says stand. Well, the word withstand means to oppose. Okay, uh, you can withstand against the wiles of the devil. So what it's saying is, you can you are going to stand, and, and we'll get into how you can stand because it's something, it's something to do with be, having your feet shod. With the preparation of gospel peace, we'll get into that. But you can stand dressed in that spiritual power. And, and, the, and you know what? Other people may not look at you and see that. But I'll guarantee you a demonic uh, presence will see exactly what you're dressed in. You know, the demons know whether you know who you are and your authority or not. They know that. Because I've seen it many, many times. Uh, and, you know, so... In one particular case, when, when these seven you know, tried to do that, they said, uh, Jesus we know and Paul we know, but who are you? And then they chased him. <laughs> you know, I never really thought about that, but in the spiritual realm, that when the devil looks at us, he sees a lot of us running around with helmets of salvation. 
He sees, uh, from there, it starts going down. Then there's a bunch that have the sword of the spirit, and they're literally carrying it. But he, the devil can see this in the spiritual realm. And then it starts going downhill because people have to put more effort into it, and the more the effort they have to put into it, the less people are likely to do it. And having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's an important one. But when it says stand against, against means to be looking straight forward mm -hmm. at your enemy. That's what it means. To be looking straight forward at your enemy. Not looking to the side, not hiding, not trying to find something to run to hide against or something. But to be standing firm and looking at your enemy right smack in their eyes and say, it isn't going to happen. <laughs> I've said that so many what times people say it for me. That meant that? Against. Uh, stand against means uh, look look them face face look act face forward with determination and faith that you will win. Now, David did that to Goliath. You know? And where uh, do you have the word against? Because well, in, I'm not seeing in mine it says James. that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Stand against. Uh, withstand. May be able to withstand in the evil days. Okay, well, withstand okay. against the wiles of the devil is what it says here. And uh, so withstand is is the same thing as stand against. Okay, you're going to be able to withstand the devil because you're going to stand there facing him, uh, facing forward with determination and faith that you will win. Mm -hmm. Amen. So let's right. move on here. Verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Mm -hmm. Now, people say, well, that doesn't happen very often. Believe it or not, there are, from what I've heard, there are probably as many Satanists as there are Christians out there. A lot of people don't know it, because a lot of people will never let you know it, but they're out there, including in our government. And so we do have a battle going on all the time. And uh, you may not know it until you, something happens to you. You, got, you get a disease or a sickness or, you know, something terrible happens. You're fine. Who knows what? Now, you may not know that until then, and then you realize, maybe I'm in a battle. But you're in a battle all the time. That's why every morning when you get up, the first thing you should be doing is, is studying the Word and praying and asking God, for his protection and his strength and his help and divine appointments. We do all of that. That's really important. Amen. That your spirit would lead you and guide you and show you what you're facing. Mm -hmm. So that you know what's coming up. God will not hide these things from you. He wants to tell you these I things. I know in our own life, many things will set the course of our day within the first half an hour. Like earlier, Dave told you about um, God speaking to him before he woke up, or as he woke up, right. telling him that this false prophet was going to call. Many times things have happened, and it's not always for good. Sometimes, bam, you get that phone call, whatever the phone call is, before you even, hardly even have a chance to get your feet on the floor. That's why it's so important. Yep. When you prepare yourself in God, you can deal with whatever. It rains upon the righteous and the unjust, uh, the mm -hmm. just and the unjust alike, but God will deliver us from everything. We've got, and it will walk us through it. But we've got to ask him to. You know, we do important. have to ask him we to. We have to ask him to. And That's like when, you know, take a relationship, a marriage relationship. If you don't ask your partner for help, sometimes they know it, but sometimes they don't know it. You've got to ask for help. You've got to reach out. And with God, it's no different. You know, I've had several things in the last week happen. First thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, and I had to be prepared spiritually. Right. And I was, okay? And that's the important thing. You've got to be prepared. Every waking moment. Sometimes you know, in the and, night, too. Really. And, and, right, that's what I was just going to say. Sometimes God's uh, kind of prompting us to take that extra time before going to sleep, what, either for prayer or just, uh, I will meditate on verses often when I'm going to sleep. Um, things like that. Because... It's preparing you for something your first thing in the morning before you even have a chance. Sometimes during the middle of the night. So, so it does happen. God wakes me up many times in the middle of the night to tell mm -hmm. me things. And as long as you're willing, He's willing. Right. You know, it, uh, darkness is where the spiritual wickedness, you know, hangs out. Right. Mm -hmm. They like darkness. 
And so dark, a lot of things happen. Now, haven't you ever noticed that really a lot of bad things, accidents and so on, all that kind of really bad, bad stuff happens in the middle of the night? It seems like nighttime well, is when most... it can happen any time, but... Yeah. yeah, it can happen any time, but a lot of stuff happens. You know, I always heard nothing good happens after midnight. Well, <laughs> not too much good. I guess there's some people that are working third shift. I guess something happens after good. <laughs> But I'm talk I mean, there's a lot of evil that takes place in the darkness. And so you've got to be prepared all the time. So before we go to bed, before we go to bed, we place angels all around us. Right. You know, we ask God to direct us and teach us and show us things and so on. And, and he does. And when you do that, then you're starting to operate in the faith we've been talking about for the last couple of years. Right. And so it's important to understand that. So we know that this is not a physical battle we're in. No. But let me explain this. We are physically battling against physical people. You know, we really do. We sometimes have to do a spiritual battle against physical people. We're not really wrestling against the physical people because they are deceived. Many times they're, they're either oppressed or possessed by the devil uh, or one of his, one of his demons. Um, but we are they're being told one thing and they're believing something totally different than what we are believing and we know to be the truth but they're not hearing that because their ears have been plugged right and their eyes have been blinded and so so many times we are battling physical things but that are that are taking place because of the spiritual realm if that makes sense Does that makes sense to you <laughs> Apparently not. So let me try it again. I know what you're saying, but you need to feel like you came across clearly. All right. So say it again. Okay. We are. Bible says we're wrestling against spiritual forces. Okay, and not against men. But they they say that in this scripture because we they say that we're everybody can see that we're wrestling against flesh and blood. All right. It looks like it. But if we understand that this is a spiritual force behind the physical people that are coming against us, then we can come against that spiritual force. Correct. Okay, That's and better. stop those people and maybe even lead them to Christ. All right, and so if we understand that. One of the things I might add is the devil has an agenda and he has an agenda against us individually, families, communities, uh, states, countries. Yep. He has an agenda against everything on everything. Yeah. including his own people um, that he uses. Yeah. He has an agenda, and it is not for good at all. And so when somebody tells a lie, who who instigated it initially? God, Jesus calls Satan the father of all lies. See, that's kind of what we're talking about. Yeah. So a person may think they're doing it in their own will, but the motivating factor behind it is the one who has the agenda, which is the devil. And... You know, you are listening, you know, let me explain it this way. We are not just a body. We are body, soul, and spirit. So two, two thirds of us operates in the spiritual realm. I know that's hard to believe, but it's true. Okay. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, some people just walk around as a, a zombie, I think sometimes, but nevertheless, oh. I'm just kidding. No, but so we have to understand that, that this spiritual thing is going on all the time and you're listening Whoever you're listening to is who you're following. And if you're hearing someone telling you to do something and people say, I don't hear voices. Well, they do. Everybody does. Okay. You're hearing from God or you're hearing from the devil or, or one of his angels, demons, whatever you call them. Okay. So you're listening to something. And so that's well, what. I don't think it's always recognized as a voice. I think sometimes it's recognized as a thought. Or intuition or whatever or you want to say. Yeah. A thought. But it is, you're getting it from somewhere. And people that are not really serving the Lord are getting it from the wrong side. Mm -hmm. okay? And so it is a, a battle that you're fighting against the spiritual. Because when you can correct their thinking, and you can get them born again, and get them to become a new creation in Christ, then those old things pass away, and then suddenly your thinking changes. Their thinking changes. And you're not battling them anymore. It could have been a horrible battle before. You know, I mean, maybe for a job or who knows what, but... Suddenly, that disappears when they get born again. But I think part of it, too, is, is we're to love people. God is love, and that is our first commandment. Love the, well, the first commandment is love the Father with all our heart, and then your brother also. And we're to love people. And when we see them as 
the person we're having whatever battle we're going through with, we, we're we not walking in love. When we understand that there's a spiritual force behind evil that we are being exposed to in battles, then we, we ch it changes everything. You're free to love the person, but hate the, the evil coming at you. Right. Yeah, you don't have to like love the, the evil, you know, but anyway, but yes, we do need to love the people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's something that's not been taking place in the United States lately. And it needs to get back to overall. That. Overall. Overall. Totally. Doesn't matter. Yeah. You can pick any group of people. You can pick any scenario. And it doesn't matter. Overall, the, this country's been against itself. Yep. In a very strong way. So that needs to change. But moving on. Verse 13. It says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, to stand. And we'll get into that, but let me take this verse. Okay, therefore we, it says, it doesn't say take up part of the armor of God, does it? No, it I mean, if, whole. what part would you take? Well, I'd take the sword, if that's all I can have, you know. But that's not what it says. It takes, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand. Again, we're talking about facing the enemy as a force of nature. Mm -hmm. If you have the whole armor of God on, you have confidence and you can do that, right? The Amplified Bible says complete armor. Complete armor. Mm -hmm. So you can stand and look evil right in the eye and say, no more, it's no done. More. So it says, so you can withstand in the evil and day. And you really do have that authority as a believer in Christ and as understanding your position with him. Right. So Luke, um, Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. The enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing That's part of part and of the nothing, armor. not some things. Nothing. nothing shall by any means right. hurt you. You know, I know that uh, Cindy and I, we we've had a lot of battles over the years, and the devil would love to take us out many times. Not just us. We only talk about us because we know us. But many people have had these battles, <laughs> and um, and could have been taken out, and. I hear every day about how this great Christian, you know, died, so it must have been God's will. Uh, you think it might have been the devil's will? He wanted to take him well, out. Well, let me ask this. How does that line up with John 10.10? 10? John 10.10. 10, there are foundational scriptures that are far more important than any other, and I really encourage you to memorize this one. John 10.10 10 says that the thief, that's the devil, yep. comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And Jesus said, but I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, which one is a person dying early? Is yeah. it still kill and destroy, meaning the devil? Or is it life and life more abundantly? Well, that's an easy one. Yeah, that's an easy and one. when you line scripture up with scripture, or when you line events up with scripture, it makes it so much easier to understand. So anyway, so it says... Uh, so you may be able to withstand in the evil day. The evil day is probably what we're looking at right now, and there were a lot of other evil days, but we're kind of in the midst of one. I mean, other countries have had evil days before now, okay? <laughs> I mean, let's look at uh, Germany, for instance, and, and the Jews that were getting slaughtered, you know, one, one and a half million, or was it one and six million? The Amplified calls it uh, evil days of danger. Right. So depending on where you live, you've had other evil days. You might be not in an evil day right now where... We, at the United States, might be in an evil day right now. But whatever your evil day is, uh, you've got to be able to stand. And if you've got the whole armor of God on, you can stand. And having done all to stand, stand there for. So we, at the very beginning, we said, now what do we do now? Now that everything we thought that we had prayed for didn't come to pass, everything you read on the internet didn't come to pass, so what do we do now? We stand in our faith and in the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And when you've done all to stand, it says, stand, therefore. In other words, keep standing. Don't quit. What's interesting, when, when I got knocked down in uh, Washington, D.C., uh, with that tear gas, uh, I had a guy pick me up. And uh, I, when I went down, I immediately called for angels, and then this big guy picks me up. When I look back now, it might have been an angel. I didn't know. But he told me this. He said, you can't lay down. You've got to stand. And then that was it. You know, he says, you, you stay down, you could die, but you got to stand. You just got to keep standing. And then he was gone. And, and so I, I thought he was meant that if I laid down, 
this tear gas would kill me. So I got up and stood up. <laughs> but it turned out that I found out that wasn't true. Uh, I found out that was absolutely not true. It won't kill you. Uh, I mean, it could, but very rarely, you know. So he didn't mean to stand up because I was going to die on the ground if I didn't. People said, well, you might have got trampled. No, I was at the very front. There was nobody behind me to trample me, okay? So uh, he didn't mean that. So he was telling me, you got to stand. We can't stop. You've got to believe that what I said was true, and you got to stand. We can't stop standing. So, well, I've been standing too long. I need to sit up. I don't want. I don't want to fight this battle anymore. And many, 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 many Christians who are standing strong sat down once. Once uh, President Biden took his oath of office, and that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to continue. No, we've. Standing. There's many things we can do yet, but especially getting involved on a local level and doing anything we know to do. Um, but you know, I found interesting. Once the um, inauguration went, took place, because I was very much pushing and praying and backing President Trump. And once that happened, I had a peace. Do you want to know why? Why? Because there was nothing more I could do. I had no <laughs> choice but to give it 100% to, to God. Yeah. And the peace I had at that time was actually quite amazing. Maybe that's what and, God was waiting um, for. Huh? But, but the thing, here's the thing though. Your prayer changes when you've got peace. You still pray, you still pray intently, but now you're praying from a different aspect. God is in control. You know he's in control, and that's how you're approaching it. All right, let me go on here. I want to get through this. Okay, so you're uh, not going to get through. Verse it. 14. <laughs> Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. But first of all, girded your waist with truth. It's a belt, a belt of truth, they call it, a belt of truth. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important that you you have a belt of truth. Truth means that you're going to be telling the truth all the time, you know, and, and uh, truth will win out. Okay, now I will comment because there's so much been said about truth the last few months with the election. The truth spoken of here is the word of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. And I just want to point that out real quick. So you, it is God's truth. So the belt, the belt is, is very, very important to the armor um, of the Roman soldiers. Because on their belt hung a lot of their weapons, including the sword. All right. And so if, if their belt fell off, they could lose their sword. They could lose a lot of stuff there that they needed to have. And so without the word of God, we're, you know, we, we better run because we're in a battle that we can't win without the word of God, without, without the weapons of our warfare. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so uh, they're, they're spiritual weapons, but we got to have them. So the, the breath, the truth is very important. And the belt is very important. And uh, you may not remember this <coughs> commercial from years and years ago. It probably was gone way before most of you were born. <laughs> I said, well, I was telling, telling people how, you know, when they first started putting say, say, seat belts in the cars. And so they had this, this and that's a long time ago. But anyway, they had this commercial that said, buckle up for safety, buckle up. <laughs> buckle up for safety, always buckle up. Well, then we changed the last part. Show the world you care about the pants you wear. Buckle up for safety, always buckle up. Well, see, and that's what it's, at times, guys. that's what this is saying. <laughs> if you don't keep that belt on, you're going to lose some of the most important things that you need for this battle. Amen. So that was really important. Fifteen. Uh, it says, "Have your feet shod with the well, preparation." You missed the breastplate of righteousness. Okay, putting on. Okay, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. That's not our righteousness. No. It's the righteousness of Christ. So we know that this is all done through the power of Jesus. Amen. And then it says, having your feet shod with the preparation of gospel of peace. So let me read a little bit about the feet. This is from Rick Renner. I'm going to try to just get it kind of, okay, I've got the wrong one here. Where am I at? Okay, here we are. I'll get the right one here. It says, are you wearing your killer shoes? That was his, his title of that. And uh, so what it's talking about was this, the soldiers, their shoes were a weapon. All right, their shoes were a weapon. On their, their shoes went from, of course, almost just below their knees all the way down onto their feet and strapped very tightly. And on, their, on this leather that was strapped tightly, it had pieces of metal sticking out. It had, it had barbs and stuff. So that if anything, try, anybody tried to take out their legs, they're going to get hurt. 
right? And so uh, it, would, it would reflect swords and all that kind of stuff. But a soldier could actually, it had, it had a big, like a nail thing protruding out of the toes. It says you don't want to fall down in front of a, in front of a Roman soldier because you would be killed without them doing anything, just walking on them. And so that was extremely important, amen? So the feet were shod with preparation of gospel of peace. Notice that God connects peace with these killer weapons. And, and that's kind of strange, isn't it? But the soldiers and you're a soldier, okay? We're not talking about Roman soldiers now. We're talking about us being a soldier. We can walk into dangerous places without worrying about getting hurt. A lot of times they were doing battle in the woods in different places where there could be, you know, things that could hit their legs and thorns and so on, but it didn't take them out, okay? They had peace knowing that they were walking into battle, totally full of armor, and that their legs would be okay, their feet would be okay, and that's important. If you don't have your legs and your feet in the battle, you're not going to win, all right? So that's really important that that's, you know, that's what it was talking about. It wasn't saying that you had peace all over your feet. It was saying you had peace of mind because of what you were wearing, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen? All right. So then 16, above all, taking the shield of faith in which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The shield of faith. Faith Faith means that you know you're going to win. David knew he was going to win. He didn't even have a physical shield, but he had a, he had a spiritual shield with him because he had a covenant with God. We talked about the covenant a lot. That is a spiritual shield. Okay, or, or so uh, you know that shield of, of uh, what do you call it? Taking the shield of faith, and so that is a shield of faith that David had. He had no doubt he was going to win, yeah. even though that giant had a spear. You know, he had all kinds of other stuff, including sword and so on. David didn't have any of that, but he still beat him because he had that spiritual armor on. Amen. And so that that spiritual uh, shield of faith is extremely important. It's, it can quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Do we have fiery darts coming at us? Oh, yeah, all the time, all the time. But we quench all, right? We do. A lot more now that we're older, we've learned a lot of stuff. We didn't quench them all when we were younger, but we're doing pretty good now, right? Anyway, uh, and take the salvation, the helmet of salvation. So you can't have any of this without Jesus Christ as your Lord, That's okay? Right. You've got to have that helmet of salvation, or you're going to be taken out so fast, it's not funny. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Let me read about the sword. Because this is based upon Roman, remember Romans uh, had their, their armor on, it's based upon what they had. So let me let me read about the sword here. I'm trying to get to that spot here. Okay. Uh, this, this sword uh, for the Romans was called a, uh, what's it called? Met got the word here, Mashariah, Mashariah sword, okay, which basically what it means, it's, it's a curved sword um, that is extremely sharp, just a touch could almost cut your finger off, that's how sharp it was, the tip of the sword was often turned upward, and uh, sometimes it was even twisted into like a corkscrew, this dagger type sword was razor sharp, it could easily be thrust into the abdomen of the adversary. And uh, so, I mean, it, it was for killing and torturing, okay? And, and I know that sounds bad, but we're talking spiritual again here, okay? It means that we can take out the enemy very easily if we have the sword of the spirit. Are you spirit-filled? Are you spirit-filled? People say, I don't need the spirit. Oh, yeah, you do. Let me tell you, you want that sword of the spirit. It's extremely important in your life, amen? And so... Uh, the sword of the spirit is probably, uh, that is your offensive weapon. Everything else is defensive, all right? Everything else is defensive. Your only offensive weapon is the word of God, okay? The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, amen? Read verse 18 again. Well, I haven't got to 18 yet. I, I was on 17. Oh, I guess I was. Well, wait a minute, yeah, 17. 17. Read 17 again. And the helmet, take the tongue, helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Right. Okay? This is the sword of the spirit, the word of God. And the Bible says when Jesus comes back, you know, after the seven years, he's going to come down and, and defeat everybody in the, in the Valley of Armageddon that's coming against him and all the Christians. 
uh, Christians, he's not coming against the Christians, but the Christians and Jesus are coming down and they're going to defeat the enemy that has been coming against the Christians. And, and they are many right now. It's well, coming. I would encourage you to bring, bring together what you were saying about the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Okay, it's the sword of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit has, has anointed this Word. Right. Okay, this word is not just logo. Logos means it's just a book. Not a fun, you know, I mean, I'm not saying it's just a fun book to read. This is your life. It is. It's your life. Which makes it rhema word, which yeah. is a life, living word. When Jesus did battle with, with the devil upon the mountain, mm -hmm. what did he use to defeat him? The word. He used the word of God. Thou and, shall not tempt the Lord thy God, and goes on from there. Right. And so we got to use the word of God in our life to defeat the enemy That's in our right. life as well. Amen? That's right. And, this, this, and then it says, uh, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, praying always with all supplication. In other words, it's fervently. Mm -hmm. We gotta fervently be praying. Not just saying, well, I got two minutes, I guess I'll pray for two minutes. No, no. I'm talking about fervent prayer in the spirit. It says praying in the spirit. People say, well, I don't like that tongue stuff. Well, that is praying in the spirit. So you need to get to liking it, okay? That is praying in the Spirit. Because the devil can't understand what you're praying when you're praying in the Spirit. But that yeah. kind of prayer um, allows things to happen in the spiritual realm. Exactly what Dave's been saying all night. And exactly what we see uh, in taking on the, um, the armor of God. Yeah, it, it uh, you know, when you pray in the Spirit, things happen in the physical. They do. They do. You know, the, the place where it says, what, you know, whenever you loose on earth, will be loosed in heaven. You're loosing things and binding things when you're praying in the Spirit. The magnitude of prayers that went up this fall from America was, I would love to have been in the heavenlies, up in heaven and without dying, and seeing how it all <laughs> rose up. It had to have been just the most incredible thing to see. And since the... Um, uh, inauguration, much the, a lot of that prayer intensity has, has ceased, it has. and it can't. It, it can't. Whether you're praying for your country, and don't forget to pray for your new president. I mean, um, it is still our job. It is our job to pray and for. He's him. in leadership at the moment, so he's who we would need to pray for at the moment. And people have asked me in the I past, they said. What's that? I added at the moment. <laughs> yeah. People have asked me many times, well, how do you pray for someone you don't like? So I've been asked a lot, how do I pray for the president? I don't like him. And people don't like to pray for people they don't like. But you're supposed to, the Bible says, pray for those who despitefully use you or come against you, you know? Uh, we're supposed to. So how do you pray? You pray for their salvation. Mm -hmm. If, if... In his case, we can also pray for him as, in his leadership. We need pray that God will help him. That's, that's all you need to say. Most of us could agree that when President Trump took office, he was not a Christian. Some of his language and stuff wasn't very good. But as time went on, mm -hmm. he got born again. He, he surrounded himself with some key preachers, he including did. Kenneth Copeland, okay, to speak into his life. And then he gave his life to the Lord. He made a point to let people know that I'm no longer, whatever he was, Presbyterian, but I am a... Uh, what would he say? Non-denominational Christian. There you go. <laughs> he made it clear that he was a Christian. How many people have done that? How many preachers? How many presidents have done that? So yeah. he, you could see his growth through the four years of his presidency. When he got really strong, then he lost his position. <laughs> that's not good, but that's what the devil's purpose was, right? He didn't want a strong Christian in there. So, but he was, and maybe again. So here's the thing: we need to pray. For our president mm -hmm. we do we need to pray that salvation will come to him one thing that is very clear throughout the history of our country is that god has always spoke and through the history of the world god has always spoke to the leaders of any country always even if they weren't christians he'd wake them in the middle of the night and tell them what's going on i mean there were some that woke up and saw the finger of god <laughs> i mean doing things i mean that's true hey, god's going to speak to the leaders or they had dreams that only um the spirit-filled Christian could interpret. Right, yeah. And so they had to get a Christian man to come and tell them what's going on. And so God's still doing that. Yes. And so he is perfectly capable of speaking not only to our president, 
with the president's wife. Yeshua is the spirit anointed, right. probably in the Old Testament more so. And as, as well as to Kamala Harris and many others. In fact, I'm expecting there to be a great revival go through the Senate and the Congress. It's going to change everything, isn't it? So uh, that's one of the things I'm believing for. A lot, of, a lot of people are believing for them all die. That's not a good thing to pray. That's not a good thing to believe for. Well, as you told someone recently, you want to be careful what you pray because it has a way of coming back upon you. And when you think about that, the scripture says very clearly, judge not lest you be, be judged. judged. So, so you want to be really careful with that one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've been tempted to say that at times. <laughs> I really have been. But the thing is, things that we pray sometimes do come back upon us. So it's important for us to pray for them to be blessed as a Christian, that they'd become a Christian, you know, and it would change their thinking in their life and all that. So we've been going an hour, and uh, so it's probably time to wrap it up. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody here? Oh, I didn't check. Well, let me see if you had no. any questions on there. No. No questions? No questions. All right, if you have any questions, let me say this. Uh, you can ask them anytime. This, this uh, video most of the time stays up live for a while. Now, some of them have been disappearing lately, but uh, most of them usually stay up. And, uh, and so you can, you can put a question on there later. Uh, if you're not watching this on Wednesday night, but you're watching it on Thursday or Friday or whatever, because that happens a lot, uh, you can still ask us a question. I check it every day. So if you ask a question, I can answer it. All right? Our, our Fresh Fire uh, Facebook page, you might be watching it on something else. So people sometimes forward this. But you can go to our Fresh Fire uh, Facebook page, and it's Fresh-Fire Ministries. And it's Pastor Dave and Cindy Crumball. You'll see our faces. And you know that you can put a question on there on, under comments. And we'd love to answer them. If it's a private question, then you can call, you can email, or you can send us a messenger uh, yep. comment and then... Uh, so you do not have to put out there where everyone can read it if you would prefer not to. That's right. You can get a hold of us privately. Uh, our phone number is on that page as well. Go ahead and quote it. It's 231-497-6028. Uh, That's 231-497-6028. And so you can get that to us privately. You can, uh, you can call us or you can messenger us. You can also uh, email me at Dave Crumbaugh at yahoo.com. My name's in, in the Facebook page, so you can find it easily. Thank you again for joining us in this Bible study tonight. And have a wonderful evening. Amen.